This is the Little Moments Count radio podcast, created in partnership with community radio stations throughout Minnesota. Each episode, you'll hear interviews with early childhood experts on how to support the important brain development that takes place in the first 1,000 days of life, just through Little Moments every day. Learn more at littlemomentscount.org slash podcast. Good day to be indigenous. Get up, stand up. They are going to become more brutal. Cody Cup, he me cut a game. Because all the hippies are trying to be Indians anyway. They're going to become more repressive because it's a matter of dollars and their illusionary concepts of power. Hey, big kids. We must live in balance with the earth. And also with recent happenings at Wounded Knee. I am awake. Welcome to Native Roots Radio presents I'm Awake and I'm your host, Wakanja Hade. Hey, Karagi, to all my friends and relatives in four directions, you are listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents. I'm awake and I'm your host, Robert Pilot. And we discuss local and national Native news and events. And as you know, Haley, Native issues are human issues and human issues are Native issues. You're right, Dega. This episode of Native Ritz Radio is presented in partnership with Little Moments Count. Little Moments Count is a statewide collaborative focused on helping parents and caregivers learn about the importance of brain development in the first three years of life. Yeah, nearly 80% of brain growth happens in the first thousands uh, day, thousand days. And small moments of interaction like talking, playing, reading, and singing help create the pathways that build a child's brain during this early stage of life. For more information, you can visit at littlemomentscount.org and we're really excited uh you know last time we had uh little moments count on we were uh, it was a rock and roll show and i'm looking forward to this too and i see uh melanie anderson there and melanie welcome to native roots radio good good evening how are you good and there's chris uh who and i just want to uh touch on your uh bio here melanie and a little bit and is uh uh, you are developing a program called Now and Zen uh, through the Indigenous Parent Leadership Initiative, pro- a community project. Now and Zen is a logo, mindfulness, and meditation program for white earth youth ages 12 to 17. And uh, that's uh, exciting. And I know there's someone down here in the cities who does that all over the nation, uh, uh, Lotus, uh, Lotus Yoga. And she is just... Uh, it, she said that it saved her life learning yoga, and uh, so that's really cool to, that you're reaching out to the the young ones or the middle young ones uh, about this great uh, activity that can really help you um, spiritually and and all those good ways. And 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 I want to say, hey, Chris, uh, welcome. And Chris, you're a facilitator. Uh, you're originally from Pine Point and are an enrolled cit- citizen of White Earth Nation. And have worked uh, for 15 years with the White Earth RBC in various positions in education, ICW, and mental health. Your passion and throughout your career has been to, uh, you know, to reach out to, to parents in education. Parents pay, play the most important role of, of our young ones. And we've talked about that many times here on uh, Native Ritz Radio about how important it is for our parents to uh, support their young ones and uh, in many ways. And so great to have you on. And uh, I want to throw this question out here uh, is, you know, what is the Indigenous Parent Leadership Initiative? Who would like to answer that for me? I can answer that. Um, Thank you for having me again. The Indigenous Parent Leadership Initiative, it's a nationally accredited and evidence-based parenting leadership curriculum that's culturally infused and customized to empower our tribal communities. And I think that's the neatest part about it. Um, It came about through the Community Solutions Grant and the Minnesota Department of Health. They partnered with Indigenous Visioning, and the National Parent Leadership Institute, um, White Earth Nation, Dr. Antine Troyer, and support from the Northwest Minnesota Foundation to bring the Indigenous Parent Leadership Initiative to Native Country. It's a free 20-week program. Um, it integrates child development, leadership, democracy skills, and our Ojibwe culture into a parent curriculum to, impar- to empower 
our parents' voice. So the first 10 weeks of it will focus on self-perception with a focus on the differences, the parents' voice, their values, their family and community strengths. And then the last 10 weeks is a study on how these changes occur within our educational, tribal, state, federal, and our local governments. Is that the, the self uh, uh, analysis that you were talking about? Is, is that the, the final outcome of how we think about ourselves or how, do, how does that work? Chris? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by self analysis. <laughs> Well, we, I, th- I think you said the, what did you call it? The self, uh, per, per, uh, perception. Um, oh, their self perception. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's more on how they, they see themselves as a parent and how mm-hmm. important their role is a parent in the community. Cause a lot of times we hear, well, I'm just a parent, you know, it's like empowering them to realize that you are the parent, you have that power and that strength. And you need that confidence to find your voice to make these changes in the community for your family and most importantly for our children. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's big time. Hey, I want to you know ask uh, uh, Melanie a, a little bit here. Melanie, what is uh, the community project and how is it helping the youth in the White Earth uh, community? And uh, what do you hope to accomplish there? And uh, Welcome again to Native Roots Radio. Yeah, so um, I interviewed for the Indigenous Parenting Leadership Initiative back in, gosh, November, December of 21. So it was just coming out of COVID. Um, I worked for White Earth Mental Health um, through White Earth, and I saw a, a huge need in our kids um, that just needed to get moving and get out of the house. And um, and then coming back to school, they were so scattered and um, not able to focus, not able to concentrate. And I wanted to, and part of my job at, at the Bagley High School um, where I work is to teach kids skills. And so it was like perfect. And I did some research, um, I wanted a, Native American program, yoga program to go through. Um, There wasn't any available at the time. And I found this Breathe for Change program, uh, which is for educators and community members. And their values just like hit home for me. It was um, breathe for beginnings, breathe for compassion, breathe for gratitude, breathe for communication, breathe for social justice, um, breathe for playfulness, just all of these different things. And I just, it was a great fit, a great match. And I'm so glad that that I completed the program. So I am a, a 200 hour yoga teacher. And within the Breathe for Change program, they also had um, social emotional learning and so I am able to facilitate those types of groups too for kids in the community. Yeah, I mean that uh, the stretching and uh, the things that it's just good medicine. You know, I I'm 62 now and I need to stretch all the time. But I mean, the young ones that get into get involved with that, you can do a lot of things. You can run mm-hmm. faster. You get that uh, those those poisonous things out of your muscles and. Uh, you can think better, and it's it's a really, uh, I I think it's a great idea and a pr- pretty brilliant, Melanie. Yeah, and also, uh, what is it, uh, Indigenous Lotus? She's actually one of my role models. <laughs> yeah, she's uh she's out there doing it, and uh, not to get deep in her story, but you know, she was a troubled teen, and mm-hmm. uh, she talks about how it saved her life. So I I buy in and she's still doing it. That isn't a flash in the pan. So yeah, definitely got to give, uh, give her a shout out. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, we're, we're here, we're here talking to Melanie Anderson and Chris Manning, and we're talking a, a, a little about yoga, a little about our young ones. And, you know, we're talking in partnership with little moments count of what's going on 
here in Minnesota and uh, specifically here with White Earth. And we're excited. So we'll be right back uh, after this short message. You're listening to Native Ritz Radio Presents. I'm awake. Stay with us. Hi, this is Representative Sharice Davids from Kansas. I'm Ho-Chunk, and you're listening to Native Roots Radio. And we're back to Native Roots Radio presents I'm Awake with Robert Pilot. Hey, this portion of the show is supported by Little Moments Count. That's right. Little Moments Count is a statewide collaborative focused on helping parents and caregivers learn about the importance of brain development in the first three years of life. And we're talking uh, to Melanie Anderson and Chris Manning, and we are getting down to the brass tacks of this, Chris. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about what is the Indigenous Foundation curriculum, and let's uh, bring that back up to our, our listeners that might not know. The Indigenous Foundations curriculum is um, offered through a cultural lens, and it acknowledges our Anishinaabe identity, the effects of our historical trauma due to the boarding school area. And each week, there's a a different teaching that's offered along with the NPLI curriculum. It's a journey of healing, of transformation, We talk about the Ojibwe values, the teachings, the language, the healthy traditional lifestyle for the participants. And it is compromised um, by the seasons, by the Ojibwe calendar. So what we taught during the fall and what we taught during the spring kind of correlates between those teachings. Uh, It is what I really liked about the Indigenous curriculum um, that was developed by Anton Troyer is that we were able to customize that to what our participants needed, what they wanted. um, And we were able to take one section and make it our own. Um, So instead of having maybe 15, 20 minutes just devoted to historical trauma, we made that into our own session. So that was a full two hour session. We talked about epigenetics. We talked about historical trauma, the boarding schools. We talked about hope, you know, the, the changes that we can make, the, the importance of having those healthy relationships, the healthy environments. Uh, we also did a, like a healing ceremony along with that. So at the end of that session, because it was really a very powerful and emotional session, we had the participants write letters to either their grandparents that were affected by boarding school, their parents, or even to the children that were not able to come home. And kind of what changes that they as parents are going to make to keep their traditions alive, to keep our culture alive not only for those that weren't able to make it home, but for them and their future generations. So it was a very powerful and moving session. Wow, that is powerful. Just to, just to hear it sounds so powerful. Uh, Melanie, what, uh, what do you hope uh, to accomplish through this whole process of yoga and, um, and reaching out to the young ones and working on their development in a good way? Well, I, I see that our kids have experienced a lot of trauma. Um, and so I hope to get kids better able to process some of that stuff through releasing that trauma in our body um, because it is stored there. And I would like to move forward and do some trauma-informed yoga stuff with with the kids. So um, I am looking at that and completing my 300-hour yoga teacher training. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right about that. Uh, So many studies have shown that that is a big thing that we store our trauma and our hurt in our bodies and uh, um, I mean, years ago, I had healing work done on me, and uh, the person said, I think it was a Reiki person, was saying that she felt 
you know, there was a pain in my heart, you know, and those are, those are real things that, mm -hmm. uh, that we need to take care of as young and uh, or at, at any age, but hopefully as a young age, so we don't carry that with us forever. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, how is your project, uh, Melanie, how is your project funded? Uh, so going through IPLI, um, we were given a, a grant. And so I used that. I also did a, a, a GoFundMe page and was able to come up with some funding there. And then I paid the difference because it was kind of an, a more expensive program to go through. Um, but it was worth it to me and for the kids that I serve. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, and being a, a, a role model is so important, especially when you're working with young ones. I know because if they're not saying much, they're watching and mm -hmm. they're watching your actions and who you are and, uh, and and going there with a good heart and um, doing things that it sounds like that you're doing. I'm sure the, the young ones will really catch on to that, that you're, you're there with a, in a good way. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Chris, what what are your thoughts about, you know, how do we sustain this? How do we keep this going? Because um, I'm sure there's a few bumps in the road in the beginning and 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 you, sometimes you have to take two steps back to take three forward. What how do you keep moving in, in a good way? That's something that Beth and Barb are continually looking for is for grants to help fund the project because it is it quite spendy for a cohort to go through. Um, they know that the Community Solutions Grant was refunded, so they will be applying for that in the fall. Um, and again, they're just continually looking for funders, looking for partnerships um, to keep this going. And so we have people that go through this and they, I guess they would be called alumni, right? And uh, so how do you work with the alumni and the people who have gone through or going through this uh, program and process? Um, we do have an alumni program. So our first cohort, we did graduate 11 parents. The wow. second cohort, we graduated 10. So they'll all be together for the alumni. And we'll have meetings on um, if they want more networking information, if they want more like for budgets, um, and for fundraisers, what we can do to look for connecting our past or prior participants to funders that are available now. And what's really neat is that our out of our first cohort, we did have two participants that are now our facilitators. So for the second cohort, they were facilitators in training and they'll be going to the national training here next week to become officially uh, facilitators. I think we had one on the show. Uh, if I remember correctly, one of the young ladies, a uh, parent became a facilitator and went through the, the program. I, I, I think from my uh, perspective that it's very important to have alumni involved because they've gone through the program and it's not as scary when you see somebody uh, that's gone through the program in, in a good way to um, to see that that they're still <laughs> they're still doing it and there there's still positive things happening in their life as an alumni so that's that's really a great idea to have the alumni involved well I agree with my I agree with myself there Chris <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know we only got a couple more minutes here uh, you know why don't we Melanie why don't you uh, say a few words about you know how you feel and how how you came about this program um and you say you know our 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 friend down here in the cities uh uh you know uh, the lotus uh the lotus lady uh she uh is all over and doing good work and started up and she's kind of a person that you look up to how, how else how did you get involved um, well, like I said, um, when I joined IPLI, um, one of the components of the program um, was to do a community project. And um, we were supposed to, you know, what is what is your passion? Like, what 
what is your passion we had to think about. And so I like narrowed it down. I love working with youth. I work in a school. Um, I've dedicated my entire career to working with kids and families. And I came across this program. It was uh, uh, yoga and mindfulness and meditation and social emotional learning. And it just, it was right for me at the right time. And um, yeah, I enjoy everything that I do with it. And I continue to work with kids and yeah. And I am glad to be a part of the alumni. Yeah, that is awesome. So, you know, I just want to let everyone know for more information, you can visit at littlemomentscount.org. And, and what a great program. I'm going to uh, ask Chris if you want to uh, finish off this uh, segment in, in some good way and a good words that, uh, that I, I, I'm always amazed in a, good, in a good way on all the great work that you guys are doing. Um, and I think it, I really believe that 11 and 10 are really great numbers to start with and to build from because it'll just mushroom out. But uh, give us a give us a, a, a one minute here of how you feel and um, about this program. This program to me is just is so special because we're able to see parents come from all sides of our reservation, come together, mm -hmm. realize that they are important. What they have to say is important to find their voice to have that confidence and seeing their personal growth again from when they first come in saying, what did I sign up for to developing these relationships to mm -hmm. having more activity within their own community and just watching that it, it amazes me. It's like watching your child's first steps and you're so excited. And after each session, we would be really excited with, what the participants have learned. Um, not only the participants were learning, but us as facilitators were learning as well. We would talk about what we just witnessed, um, kind of review what we needed to change. And it's it's an emotional, rewarding experience. And I really feel that this needs to be in every Native community. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, I want to thank you to uh, Melanie Anderson and Chris Manning for stopping in. You're listening to Native Roots Radio Presents I'm Awake and A Little Moments Count. Hey, if you're listening to this show, you're part of the resistance from Chief Plenty Coops. The ground in which we stand on is sacred ground. We need to resist, divest, join a group, run for office, and vote. We're still here. We are the seventh generation. Free Leonard Peltier. Now. Now. Thanks for listening to the Little Moments Count radio podcast in partnership with community radio stations throughout Minnesota. You can find the Little Moments Count radio podcast wherever you get your podcasts and at littlemomentscount.org slash podcast.